So who's going to heaven? All Christians who know and who love Jesus Christ, who worship the Holy Trinity, and who trust in God for their salvation rather than looking to their own works. Do you understand what I mean by looking to their own works? Is that recording? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, one of the fundamental messages of Christianity, I'd say arguably the fundamental message of Christianity that distinguishes itself from all the other religions on the planet, is that we don't believe that people earn their way to heaven through their good works. See what I'm saying? In fact, St. Paul actually says, if you believe that your, the, the phrase he uses is um, of your uh, adherence to the law, i.e. the Torah, if you believe, but he's talking more generally about good works, if you believe that that gets you brownie points with God, you're not going to go to heaven. Christianity is a message of free salvation in Christ. It's something that God gives to us as a gift, it's not something that we earn by being good people. That's fine, it's fine, it's a loud, loud place to be. Yeah, um, where was I? Yeah. Every other religion on the planet teaches something to the effect of if your good works outweigh your bad works, your good deeds are more than your bad deeds, you, 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 you're going to go up. And if, if uh, on the scales of judgment, if your bad works outweigh your good deeds, you're going to go down to hell. Absolutely not what Christianity believes. And that's good news. Because if you believe that your good works, your prayers, your almsgiving, your fasting earn you a place in heaven, it's going to lead to one of two, one, uh, one, of, uh, one of two attitudes and mindsets. Either you're going to think that you're getting it right, that you're making the cut, that you are a good person who's got on the way to heaven, and you're going to become self-righteous, conceited, and arrogant, which is what happened to the Pharisees. That's why Jesus had had them as his enemies. I was about to say Jesus hated them. Jesus doesn't, Jesus doesn't hate anyone, not even the Pharisees. Did he hate Satan? Uh, yes. No, he, uh, 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 he hates, he doesn't hate any humans. God does hate Satan. Oh, okay. Sorry. But although God's hatred is different to human hatred. That's maybe a shelf that discussion for oh, now. Oh, sorry, I forgot. You guys think Jesus and God is the same guy. Uh, the same being, not the same person. That's the doctrine of the Trinity, which we'll get onto in a second if you like. But I want to finish this point first. So, wait, wait. If Jesus was yeah. on earth, who was running heaven? God the Father. So, what, was he like an avatar body? Or? We wouldn't use the language of avatar, no. What he was, it, he was the incarnate son of God. So, what we believe about God is that God is one being and three persons. Do you understand the distinction between being and person? No. Fair enough. It's not something we use in everyday life. Being is what makes you what you are. So, we're all human beings. Person is what makes you who you are. So, we are all distinct persons. Now, God, because as I'm sure you'd agree, as you said, you'll believe in God, yeah. being so far above all created things can transcend these categories as we understand them. And that means that he can be more than one person whilst being one being. Now, those three persons are God the Father, who, as you say, was running heaven whilst Jesus, who was God the Son, became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and came to earth to die for our sins, and God the Holy Spirit, whose descent into the hearts of Christians we celebrate today because it's the Feast of Pentecost. Yeah. Does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah. It's a lot to take in, and, you know, Christians take uh, takes a while to understand the, and, and the concept of the Trinity, but it is fundamental to the Christian faith. And we, make, we were starting the conversation by talking about who goes to heaven. Um, this is essential, it's not the only one, but this is the essential and most important distinction between Christian traditions and non-Christian traditions. Christian traditions who acknowledge this, the doctrine of the Trinity, so Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox, basically, they are true Christian traditions. Christian traditions, so-called Christian traditions that don't believe in the Trinity, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christadelphians. Are they going to hell though? Yes. Are like the same hell as like the Nazis or? Well, it depends what you mean by the same hell. What hell is, is, eternal separation from God, from life, and from goodness. Yeah. Now, what that looks like, what actually happens to people who undergo that, varies from person to person. So I don't believe that the nice, uh, nice gentle atheist man who, who lives a, what we would consider to be a good life, um, but doesn't, never believes in God, never repents, never gives his life to Jesus, I don't believe that that man is going to have the same experience in hell as the Nazis. But, oh, oh, but like, he's not a bad part, like, he's never committed a crime, he's a good man. Like. Well, that's the thing, from a Christian perspective, we have all committed crimes against God. You got, I heard you guys having a conversation about sin I, earlier. So what about all the people who were around before Christianity? They're all going to hell. Not necessarily. So the, those who were part of God's covenant in Israel, in Judah, but they may, they may be saved, the Old Testament saints. 
they're so all the going to hell. Different Christians will give you different answers on this, but the general consensus is we don't know exactly what will happen to them, but they still need the gospel in order to have the message of salvation. Yeah. I don't know, I kind of felt like there would be like a, a, a parole here in or something. Like, yeah, so, you know, I, I'm not going to... the majority of Christians. And you, tell you what. That's, good, that's point one. Not because there, you knew you were going to heaven, but because... Let me, let me right, there is a day of judgment thing. Are we changing mics? Yeah, no, so I'm just going to so We talking? Make a point now. Sorry. Oh, I, just, you I, just made, I just changed the virus. So my point was basically to add on to his point, right? That basically, hell is the absence of God. Yes, the absence of life, the absence of love, the those, absence of those light. Who deny, those who deny Jesus, or those who before Jesus came and before there was an incarnation, before there was a cross, those before that, they will be judged according to what they have. According to what they have, exactly. That to, to much is given, much is required. They were not given much. They weren't given much. So little is required of them. Yeah. Other than what, what, how God would judge them. We don't know how God would judge them. Exactly. The generic so, Christian answer that the church would give to this would be, we don't know, but they need Jesus. Now, just as much as all humanity needs Jesus, because Jesus is the cure of our sin. And he is the atonement for our sin. He paid the penalty for our sin on the cross. And they do need to believe. I'm not necessarily saying, maybe they do, I don't know, but I'm not necessarily saying that those who never heard of Jesus go to, automatically go to hell. But I do know that without Jesus, they, are, they do not have the way, the truth, the life, the secure foundation and the absolute infallible method of getting out of their sin, getting out of hell and being reunited with God for eternity. Even if there is a chance they can be saved without knowing who Jesus was or what Christianity is. Other than that, I just don't know. And there are lots of things in yeah, Christianity... I mean, that's a pretty big sort of like, I don't know. Like, but that's, I mean, a, yeah, that's okay because... Jesus uh, around like... 2020 years ago, yeah. But like, human history is like 5,000 years old. So mm. there's a solid 3,000 yeah. years of, of people. Who well, that's are, true. But no crimes who are going to hell. Well, they did. They and then there's 100,000. Well, for a few, a few million years. Let, let, let me make let me make a few points. So they something's going down off. Nah, so getting yeah. So uh, so a few points. Firstly, um, this guy running. No, no. They're just doing <laughs> a lot of uh, Of course they are. Deus know, Bolt Brothers. Deus Bolt. Anyway, that's what, that is our answer God to Allah Akbar. God, God wills it. Anyway, um, so um, firstly, I didn't say that they're automatically going to hell. Maybe they are. I don't know. I don't claim to know their fate. God knows and God will do whatever is just. We need to focus on what we have now, as you mentioned, Bloodfire. We have been given light and we need to share that light with the world. That's why we come to Speaker's Corner, ultimately. Well, just, just it, make it very plain. Exactly. If your faith is not in Christ and what he's done on the cross for the remission of sin, if you're not believing that Jesus Christ is God, he is a mediator, he, has, he is the one that has addressed the sin of our lives. If you don't believe that, you are going to hell. There's no free ways about it. It's true. Facts. So, Diana, Lady Diana that died, in a, if she didn't give her life to Jesus Christ, as controversial as that sounds, she's going to hell. Well, I mean, she cheated on her husband. So, yeah. Well, the thing is... She cut the king. So, yep. so, 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 did, so yeah. did... She's going to hell. So did the woman. Yeah, but, stoned to death and then Jesus but are you died. without sin? No, no, no. I thought she was a prostitute. Yes, but no, there's a story in the Bible. I was thinking more like it, it may be a oh, later oh, tradition, but there's a there's a story oh, in the Because the okay, Muslims say that no she problem. was an adulterer and well, I don't think the Muslims tell that story, but there's a story in the Gospel of John uh, where that teaches uh, that Christ intervened in the stoning of a woman who had committed adultery and said, Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. You know the story? Yeah, but yeah, even yeah, in yeah. Jesus' bloodline, there's a prostitute. Exactly. Really? Who? Yes, sorry, Ray sorry. Rahab. Rahab. I'm I'm quite surprised that um the um the Jews but, would tolerate but that's prostitution. The, but back that, well, this, this actually happened before the establishment of the nation of Israel in the, the Holy Land. Yeah, but the thing is this, it demonstrates God's exactly. mercy and yeah, love. love. He's coming for the worst of the worst. Exactly. The ones who feel disqualified, exactly. the ones who want to commit suicide and think they're rubbish, those are the very candidates that Jesus died for exactly. and is going to promote. And this and relates to what I said earlier about... Awesome! Some, so about, suicide about, people are going to hell. We'll get on to that in a second. And I have experience with this person because a close family member of mine committed oh, suicide. Okay. Yeah, my actually, actually, the, 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 well. I, wanna, I wanna get onto something, I don't, I don't wanna interrupt you. No, no, no worries, I'll be quick with this one. Right. So this gets back to what I was saying before about the two attitudes. I didn't talk about the second attitude. The other attitude that a, a, a self-righteous, um, that a system based on works in, in terms of salvation, the other attitude that can lead to is one of despair. Because you know that you haven't made the cut, you think you're going to hell. Jesus comes in and provides the way for all 
of those who haven't made the cult, which is all of humanity, to be saved freely. And that is why Jesus vastly preferred to hang out with the prostitutes, with the drug addicts, with the alcoholics, with the tax collectors, what, with the people who were considered the scum of the earth, because they were the ones who knew that they needed salvation. What about a kid with Down syndrome? There's uh, no way you can understand like my, the sacrifice of God and the my gospel per, My trilogy. personal, well, so may that, that may be true, but my personal belief is that people with handicaps will have a place in heaven. Oh. I don't know. I'm not claiming to know that. Oh, no, no, okay. Let, no, me, no, that's let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this to you in that response. The bottom line is, we cannot we cannot speak to someone who has Down syndrome, yeah, that's right. but God can. Oh, okay. yeah. God can speak to anyone. He made them. And we cannot know that person's ultimate fate, but what we let's focus on what we do know. Which exactly. Is Jesus Christ came but, to I, save. I, I want to mention this because yeah, ahead, Tiger actually mentioned earlier that like, right, well, he can do Tiger. good. Tiger, Tiger, sorry, Tiger. I'll just call you Tigger for short. Sure. <laughs> uh, just call me Tiger. Okay, Tiger. Oh, oh, easy, oh, tiger. Right. Oh, easy Tiger. Now. Anyway, yeah. As Tiger, Tiger mentioned earlier, right, that sin in itself, like, well, I, he can do good stuff and sin will not matter, like, it's just like, oh, I can be a good person, I can do good stuff, I can stop myself from having sex, but you can't stop the integ integral nature of sin within exactly. yourself. You sin nature. You will, you will, one minute. You will Sorry. always continually sin within yourself because that nature within you will be intrinsic to your bond. It will be bonded, it will be bonded to your soul. So, for example, I myself can say right now that I honestly do not have sex with a woman, I don't, I don't sleep outside of marriage, I have not murdered anybody, but have I thought murderous thoughts? Yes. Have I thought, have I thought demonic porn thoughts? Yes. 100%. Have I thought lustful thoughts? Yes. Same. So I am not perfect, I have a sin nature within me, but the, the, the difference between that is I've accepted that only Christ, the, ho the holy physician, can stop that mm. sin within me. Only he can cleanse me from Amen. not wanting Amen. that proclivity to sin. In other words, you're but, placing your faith in? In Christ, because the, yes. only that desire can, only Christ can say, change that sinful desire. Nothing else. We're going. Sorry. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense, brother? Amen. Yes, I understand. It's Good. just because like, earlier you, you didn't yeah, really yeah, understand. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, yeah, that was that was another debate altogether. That was like that's an off-camera debate. It didn't help that we were around some pretty angsty Muslims, did it? Because yeah. everyone's blood boiled. It's just it's just because I don't want like because there's there's just mainstream view that sin is basically just like so, it's just oh you just turn away. Basically, it's just oh I'll do bad stuff and then and then outward progression of bad stuff when really isn't that no it's an inward profession as well as that we need a heart transplant absolutely we need a spiritual change of heart amen <clears throat> so therefore sir when are you giving your life to jesus mm. What is, no, what, what is what no, is no, no, no. what's stopping you, man? What's stopping you from giving your life to Jesus? This is good news that we're giving you. It's good. There's nothing bad. What is stopping you? I need to read the Bible. Obviously. Fair enough. If it's if it's good enough. There are some things Research. that I I don't believe in the virgin conception. I think mm. Jesus's father was. Uh, oh, you know what? I, I was about to say this one. But I know Joseph. Yeah, I, I was going to say. But yeah, <laughs> no, we get confused sometimes with some of the names. It's been a while since since I watched the films. But um, I'm going to read the original. No. Yeah, passion. Anyway, um, yeah, no. Um, Happy Pentecost, Bob. Truly, he is risen. Amen. Ali Thinos Anasti. Truly, he is risen. Truly, he is risen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Glorify him forever. Sorry, bro. No, that's okay. okay. We can't help ourselves. Fuck me. Yeah. Isa <laughs> Wakba. Sorry, no, it's not Isa, that's the Muslim that's name. Isa. Yasu, it's Yasu Wakba. Oh, yes, oh, that's it. Right. Yeah, Yasuwa is the Arabic name for Jesus. The Muslims give him the wrong name. They call him Isa, yeah. yeah. But it's actually Yasuwa. I mean, the Mexicans call him Jesus. Yeah, so, what, so, what about the virgin birth do you, do you dislike? Because there is a has historical attestation of this. I mean, remember, we can't deny that it's attestation of the gospel. And the gospels are still valid. I mean, that's like in fact, in, 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 sorry, in, acti in antiquity, why is my voice doing that? In antiquity, we, it, we have the highest level of gospel New Testament than we do of Philo, and we do of Homer, than we do of any other historical writing. Yeah. If it wasn't true, then something's wrong. Yeah. We've got because we have more than we have more than, more copies of that than we do of like stuff about Caesar or stuff from Pliny the Younger, for example. As someone who talks about ancient uh, history, as someone with a master's degree in ancient history, I can tell you everything he said is just true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a um, there's this very common myth that we don't know what the Bible originally said that yeah. it was passed by like a chain of Chinese whispers. Not true. Not it's true. not true at all. And we're not saying this is necessarily as Christians. Even. And we could get atheist ancient historians who, if they knew their stuff, would agree with us. So I mean, the King James Bible is the same Bible from the Byzantines. Uh, it's based on the same texts. Yeah. Based on the same texts. 
as in it's translated from the same text. Okay. Question and is, it's a pretty accurate question is, you need to test it out. Yeah. Yeah. You need to test, read the Bible uh, and really see what it's, is, what it's saying, is it true or is it not? But you need to have a personal experience. Living in the hearts of the Christians. And changing oh, and transforming yeah. on an ongoing basis. When you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, 100%. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he so, convicts the yeah, hearts so, of I've all men. Else, they really it. He convicts the hearts of all men. So if, if, when you become, well, for me specifically, when before I became a Christian, well, I was convicted in my heart. Weird, all right, this is a weird By question. the Holy Spirit. And this is sort of like. Go ahead. I, like I was watching a movie, Ben Hur. Right? Mm -hmm. um, like both, the one in the. Yeah, one in 2015. Yeah, yeah. One in 2015 and then the one in 20, yeah. 20, uh, like, uh, 1960s. Yeah. When Jesus came about, I kept crying every time. And that's the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's, that's the, the conviction. That is the Holy Spirit telling. It, it, you know, it's almost like the, the question you asked, brother, is Jesus your son? That was God answering that question yeah. before it even but asked. Let me give you the nature of Jesus Christ. And I said this before. Fully God, fully man. Mm. Not half and half. Not half and half. It's not a demigod. Fully He's God. Fully God fully man yeah. and there were times that he needed to express himself through his humanity depending on the audience he was teaching and what lesson needed to be taught and there were times that it was essential he expressed himself through his divinity depending on what he needed to teach so when he says me and my father are one that was his divinity speaking yes, the nature the right. and then when he was praying to the father that was his humanity expressing himself so yeah. it was essential that he was able to what's the word interchange between his different personalities depending on what needed to be taught well that, that's true brother but for the sake of not confusing him not not so much personalities but natures nature yeah so it's, nature it's, so christ christ wasn't two different people one no 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 human, fully god person, fully, fully god. man yeah. same person he, what you're saying is true yeah, I yeah, correct yeah. The language forgive me yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, you'd have to understand, like, Tug, you'd have to understand like, what is more important. The Islamic idea of God where he's just holy other and doesn't entertain reality at all. Or the idea love, of God doesn't address love. sin. Or the idea yeah. of God coming doesn't down in human sin. flesh, bearing the sins, and not only that, but bearing the very nature of mm. men. Not they the don't even way, know if they're saved. But sorry, bear, yeah. bearing, sorry, sorry, so bearing, in a sense, like, the grievances of men as well. You've got to understand God is personal. I, I he's, think, he's not alien to our... I well, think let, the let idea the idea God. of God, of, of Jesus uh, being crucified and, you know, he, he lived a very uh, humble lifestyle of a carpenter. Mm. He spoke out against a lot of injustices within his community and he was killed for it. I think it's far more uh, special that he dies as a man. If he's a, if he's God or if he's like the son of God, like an, an angel, then it's not special. He knew that he knew he was going to, I mean, obviously he knew he would be in king, king of heaven. But the fact that like the fact that he's just a man, in my opinion, that's why I see him as a man because it's more special. It's like oh, he he dies, but he goes. I, I believe it's way more special than God because yeah. it, it entertains the idea that God in himself is so it's so much a of a loving God. It's so much of a loving God that he decides of his own volition to come down and to experience yeah. what we ourselves have suffered on this earth. It makes no idea. sense that the Islamic idea of a God, a God that does, does not interact with humanity, would, would engage and create human beings exactly. the way we are, to have emotions, to have we, the, we, we the reject joys. and disavow Islam so, but, as a false religion. But, right, the, the, the version of, of, of Jesus you've got is basically a nice man who does nice things, but that's not the religion of the world. That's not the true Jesus. And on that note... And that's I'm why I call you to the true Jesus. On, on, on that note, if I may qualify, you mentioned that Jesus was killed for, for um, speaking out against injustices. Well, actually, the, every... Sorry, I don't know the full story. That's fair enough. Story. I understand you may not know all the details, but actually, that, yeah. the details... Yeah. Yeah. We have details from not only the New Testament, but hundreds of years of historical, of, uh, historical data on Jesus Christ. He was not killed for standing up to injustice. I mean, there are, they're related, but it's, it's not, that's not the reason that the, the Jews of his day wanted to kill him. The reason the Jews of his day... Uh, Rome, no, just kidding. <laughs> The reason that the Jews, or rather the Jewish leadership in his day, wanted to kill him was because he claims to be God. Oh, all right. If Jesus were just a nice Jewish rabbi who was who was being peaceful and teaching people good, good and love one another, the, the Pharisees might have liked him. They might have actually thought, this guy's useful, he's going to keep the people pacified so that they don't rebel against Rome and get us in trouble. But they, that, that's not how the Jewish leaders responded to Jesus. They, you, do, you, do you remember where, where the ripping the high priest ripping his robes, brother? Do you remember what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that in John? That's Matthew. That's in Matthew. It's Mark gonna, as well. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get this passage out because I want you. To, I want you to see exactly why the Jewish leaders wanted to kill Jesus. Bear with me a second. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Jesus delivered to Pilate. Okay, so it's from Matthew twenty-six. Here we go. Here it is. Yeah, I found that quickly. <laughs> okay, so, so this is Jesus before Caiaphas, who was the high priest of the Jews, on the council. 
Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered, and Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, here we go, two men came forward and said, this man said I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living gods. Tell us if you are the Christ, the son of God. And Jesus said to him, you have said so. But I tell you from now on, you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has uttered blasphemy. So not being a nice Jewish rabbi, blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, he deserves death. Now, why is that significant? Do you know this, this passage about, um, now and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Do you know what that's referring to? No, what is that? So that's a uh, reference back to the Old Testament to the book of Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel 7, verse 13 to 14. Thank you, brother, yes, that's the one. Daniel, in, those, in that verse, sees a vision of God in his throne. And those words, the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven, is how Daniel describes God. So when Jesus utters those words, he's claiming to be God. Yeah. That is why the, the, the Jewish leaders wanted him dead, because they yeah. saw that as blasphemy. Yeah, no, yeah. It wasn't blasphemy, because it was true. But if Jesus, has, like I say, had just been a rabbi who was preaching love, peace, respect, let's all get on with one another, which he did preach those things, but he preached so much more. They, the, the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders, would have loved him. They would have seen this guy's a really useful tool. We could use him to keep the people calm. But actually, Jesus created so many enemies by claiming to be far more than just a prophet, far more than just a good man, far more than just a rabbi, just a teacher. He claims to be the Son of Man. The really? Son of Man is a divine title. Do you so, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one other thing. The, yeah. the purple robes and the, uh, the crown of thorns, mm -hmm. is that accurate? Yes. Um, uh, are you talking about... Um, uh, the uh, Passion of the Christ in the film. Oh no, I just saw oh, it yeah. in a child's book. Oh, yeah, child's Did they really yeah. do that? Yeah, so the crowd, well, what happened is it, it basically before a man was crucified, depending on the specifics of the situation, he would often be handed over to the soldiers to just be abused, basically. Yeah. And Jesus, this, in Jesus' case, this included a very severe beating. They, uh, and because he claims to be the king of the Jews, which is another divine title, because yeah, yeah. only Yahweh is the king of Israel, the, um, the, these Roman soldiers mocked him by pretending he's a king and we're going about before you. So the crown is you yeah. know, representative of a king's crown, but as a torture instrument. Yeah. And the purple robe, because Purple was the colour of royalty yeah, in royalty. the ancient world. Uh, they, they, were, they were mocking him. And actually, it's funny, it's funny you mention that. that. That image of Christ with the crown of thorns and wearing the purple robe yeah. has produced some of our most beautiful iconography yeah. in the history of, uh, of, of Christianity. There's one called uh, the Bridegroom. The, the, uh, I refer to Christ as the Bridegroom and the Church as the Bride. Yeah. Christ was the Bridegroom who was beaten on behalf of, and never beats his wife, his bride, the church, but was beaten on her behalf. He beat her car? He was beaten on her behalf. Oh, he was beaten, okay. Referring to Christ's death in our place, and in the place of the whole church, oh, okay. see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So before this ends, because I, I really want to hearken not onto so much of Christian theology, because you're not going to understand it, unless I hearken onto this. So like, you have this idea of an arbitrary view of God, i.e. that God's basically just like, Basically this, like, oh, well, all people can call, have the name God, right? Right, literally, like, all religions, for example, they all share in the same idea of God. The problem is God is not arbitrary. If God is perfect, bro, then he would be perfect in everything he does, including the way he reveals himself. Yeah, yeah. If we have an arbitrary God that doesn't reveal himself, then we have a problem. We have a God that is holy up and does not care about us. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm coming? That would be a problem for you, not for me, because my God has revealed my revealed himself. But how has he revealed himself? Understand that there is a revelation. Well, you may not know it now, but as a, obviously as a Christian, I believe that like, Jesus Christ is true God, and like, like, He is a revelation of God, and blah 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 blah. Right. Yeah. But earlier, when I had that conversation with you, you seem to have this idea that basically, like all religions have that fundamental, fundamental idea of God. Problem is, those religions do not preach salvation the, way, the same way we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't preach a God who is personal, i.e. 
who engages with his reality and they don't preach a God that actually wants to love his creation. I, I don't think they do either. Because Allah, Allah, whilst it says in the Quran that Allah loves the believers, you don't see the love. Where is it? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Does not it, does it not say in the Buddhism doesn't give you that. Buddhism, for, you know, we, we can respect Buddhism's ethics, but at the end of the day, Buddhism doesn't provide any meaningful basis for its ethics because there's no God. It's just arbitrary it's spirituality. Just, That's what I, it is. A friend of mine who, is, who used to be a Buddhist described it as functional nihilism. Yeah. That's quite a good description of Buddhism, I think. And, and no I, disrespect to Buddhists. I think if you're a hedonist, yeah. like, and I'll say this, I'm sorry if you No, go on. But if, you, if you're a hedonist, if you're somebody that seeks pleasure, then you're not going to like. How I put it this You're not going to like. God, you're not going to lie and want to know God because God's saying, look, you are set apart because of me, you were created for this purpose. I've not created you to be aut autonomous in the sense that you yourself are the only thing you are to rely on. No, you are to rely on me solely as well. Right. So anyway, how I put it is this, bro. If, if, if your desires, if, if what you're seeking, like you, you told me earlier about Tim and stuff, if that's Sorry, what no, you're no, seeking I think, you know, I think the food, question that I think a lot of hedonists would say is, you know, if, if, if God hates hedonism, why does he fill men with such lust? God doesn't fill men with such trust. So, so loss comes from the sin nature okay. during Adam and Eve. So I when just, Adam decided to fall, I when mean, Adam decides to eat, it's basic Adam, to us as hunger. Well, let, let, this is it is right well, now because of our sin nature. Well, this, this is, this, is, this, to our this sin is the point I wanted to make. Is there may be a bit of cross eyes. When we say lust, we don't mean sexual desire in and of itself. We mean the misuse of sexual desire. Oh, okay, so yeah. in Christianity, contrary to common myth, although Christians to some extent are, have ourselves to blame for propagating yeah. this myth, sex is good. We do not believe sex is bad. We believe sex is a gift from God, but it is a gift that is only to be exercised in marriage. A marriage is that between a man and a woman. Yes. Uh, it's, so when we say lust, we don't mean all sexual desire. We mean sexual desire that is contrary to God's desire, oh, yeah. either by nature or in function because it's outside of marriage or whatever. And you just have to look at reality, like the fact that like, we have so yeah, many yeah, people no, yeah. like, sleeping around, having many kids, and then leaving uh, behind those kids. Uh, it's utter destruction. Right, we, have sing we have single parent mothers around and it just leads to absolute destruction. Uh, abs ab abstention from lust, and I don't say this as someone who has been, done a perfect job, I've done a crappy job of like, abstaining from lust in many regards, but God, by his grace, has given me the strength to resist much of my lust through the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Yeah, yeah. It is a much harder way than giving it in and having as much sex as you want. But it is so much more joyful. Am I right, blood fire? It is better. I understand. It yeah. is cleaner. It is purer. And I, I'm not clean and pure. I'm not saying I'm a good person. That's why I can resist this. Yeah. I'm saying that by the power that God provides, I can have the gift of self-control. And it is such a wonderful gift. But that's the yeah, problem yeah. with any desire. I, I, I could have the desire to have vengeance on my enemy, for example, yeah. and to kill him because he's wronged me in any sense. If I carry out the desires and, and then blame it just because I had the feeling, therefore it's all right, then I'm, I'm not, not only am I a good person, but I'm a danger to society, I'm a danger to myself, and, and I necessarily shouldn't be alive, that's the truth. So hedon, hedonistic people shouldn't be alive. If they, if they carried through that idea that hedonism is the way to go, that feelings and, and embracing what makes us comfortable is the way to go. If they carried out fully, bro, then what would happen if you have a society of people murdering people and getting away with it? We don't have justice. Absolutely. But humans have an idea of justice and that comes from good. Yeah. And of self-control. Even atheists, I don't know about hedonists, but even atheists believe in some measure of self-control. Yeah, they would have to. Christians. It's, I would it's say not consistent, but no, they would have to. Yeah. They have to be. Otherwise, it would be chaos. Yeah. yeah. Has Chris? Ha, has our conversation? Is our conversation? Made well, yeah, you've answered a lot of questions and misconceptions around like Jesus Good. and the, the crown of thorns, the and the whole why he was persecuted. I, I do need to read uh, this, the manga before I start talking about the anime. <laughs> like, yeah. So what's actually stopping you? Wait, from is it sacrilege to do, say that, or is that no. okay? Okay, cool. So what's actually stopping you from saying your original Christian word? Stop trying to push Christianity on people. Just, I'm not trying just, to push anything. I'm just asking like, a question. It's a legitimate question. Yeah. Just a legitimate question. I'm it's, not trying to push anything. It's just a no, man. It's just a no. Well, then your blood be on your head. Yeah, well, I, I, will I just say, have to be honest. What well, I will say, what I will you know say, what, mate. When, when, we, we, when I talk to Jesus, we're gonna have a real conversation. Like, no, look. What I'm saying, no, I, I, I want to hear it from God and Jesus's mouth. If you so ask, so I have my, I have my take on God. We have God God's words. The, the Holy Bible. And, we have and, Jesus. And, I think, and I'm even gonna, might take a few things from Muhammad because I want to clear up a few misconceptions. Whatever he has to say, I'll listen to him. And King Saul and Solomon and all, and all the. Well, uh, uh, I would I would advise oh, against. Have his word. Yeah. I would advise. I would I would advise against listening to Muhammad. Uh, but that's for another. That's another conversation. Yeah. But um, look, 
I, I totally get it if you feel you need to go away and consider this, but consider also that you may not have much time to actually make a decision. We, do, we are not guaranteed our next heartbeat or our next breath. Yeah, all, all we can do is show you the door. Yeah. Like we can't let you let yourself in. It's I can't let you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the level of you want to go and read the Bible, you want to go and hopefully pray, you want to think about this, you want to ask God to give you that warmth, that comfort, that experience. That experience. I get that, man. But time's ticking away. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Alex and Bloodfire. It's a pleasure. Oh, is that him? <laughs> We're praying for you, Tiger. Thank you, Alex. Bro, you look like strawberry head. Huh? I don't know. I've been told I've got a doppelganger, so... Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Are you sure though? Alex. Rafa! You want to take this one, Do you want to go? Well, we're, end, after you, man. we're ending Pentecost, at least I am, with two really good conversations, positive conversations, conversations where seeds have been sown. And I don't know about you, Bloodfire, but that's why I come to Speaker's Corner. Amen. It can be quite fun arguing with the Muslims, it can also be incredibly stressful, but it's not the ultimate reason why I come. I come because I want people to come to know Jesus Christ, to be saved, and to have eternal life in Him. I'm going to pray for Tiger. Yeah, we love you, Tiger! We love you, brother. We love you, Tiger! Go pray for him, man. And salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. He is the only name under heaven by which men may be saved. Praise his name forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you want me to wrap up a if bit? If you want, bro. Okay, then. So I, I just wanted to address the arbitrary notion of God. The idea that God is arbitrary. The idea that we all, all religions function and work in a, within the same view of God. The problem with that view, as I've explained earlier, as it leads to arbitrariness and subjectiveness, which can't, which cannot be allowed in a system that is perfect. Remember, God is holy other, he's, but he's also perfect. He's also divine. And he's also loving. And he's also personal. If you're going to have a God like that, and if you're going to believe in a God like that, then it, it isn't necessary for you to believe, and it isn't good either for you to believe believe that this God is arbitrary and all religions are the same. Actually study religions, anybody who's an agnostic or an atheist or whatever, study religions, study worldviews, understand that you yourself have a worldview blocking you from knowing the truth of Christ because everything's a worldview. Right? There is no, um, what's it called? Not narcissism, but what's it called? There is no, no true agnosticism. There's no true agnosticism, true, but there is no um, nominalism. There's no view of nominalism. There's no, oh, I'm in, a bit, I'm in the middle, I'm neutral. There is no neutrality, right. as Greg Branson says, and I was going to bring that up, right? So if there's no neutrality, you yourself are deciding for your own, your own mind to decide to choose a neutral position that you think is neutral, it isn't. It's just your own mind and your own way of functioning things, but that isn't the be-all and end-all of things. You understand what I'm saying? Logic, reasoning, anthropomorphism is not the be-all and end-all of things. All right? So I thought, I thought you people like Tyg haven't got this. Right? I, I, I do pray for him. Though. I pray that he will come out of that religion. He has not understand, understand this, understood this, that the predicates you set for yourself are a problem if you're going to be agnostic and atheist because those very pre predicates stick you to a worldview that is not consistent. It's not consistent at all. Anyway. The message we have given him today is good news. The belief he currently has is not. I know, I know. It's, I, I, I was sounding a bit technical there. I don't want to sound too technical, but. I'm just... Well done, well done, fire. Well done, Alex. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christ ah! is risen. Christ is risen. There's folks. There's folks. There's folks. There's folks. There's folks. Well, we'll see. Tiger, we love you, Tiger. Cut.